Knitters. It's Faye Lynn from Strands Knitting Studio in San Clemente, California. And today I have sort of mishmash of things, so I'll just get started. First thing I want to talk about is the cowl I'm wearing. Um, this I made it a couple years ago. You can see it's got nice big holes in it. And you do those holes by casting off so many stitches in that row several times. And then you, in the next row, you cast the stitches back on. So it's very simple to make these big giant holes and they're, you know, they're really good. And then you have a contrasting side that you knit. And this is all one tube that you're working on. So you do the whole part and then you do the contrast part and then you fold it and you seam up the one side. So this is actually pretty simple as far as cowls go. It's actually very simple. There's a little bit of shaping so that there's like these things look like little tulips. But yeah, so this one is, um, and I'll put down in the email and on the YouTube, the name of the cowl and where to get it. And this was made from um, our earth yarn, so it's fingering, but you could also make it from our beautiful Dream and Color yarns, which our new Dream and Color is here. So um, come on in, it's, we got the colors for the cowl I showed you last time. And um, this cowl, you could do, pick lots of different colors. I just picked this one out would be very pretty but it's sort of a springtime color but if you're a purple person this would be very good and would look great as this cowl it would look really great this is the contrast and this is the top so so there's some ideas for another cowl because cows are always i love cows you don't have to worry about wrapping it and the end you just stick it on you just pull it off i love my cows <laughs> and next is our clog class i still have some openings in our clog class and that's this saturday from two to four and i decided to go ahead and start my son's cow uh cow my son's clog what i was talking about that i had to knit him a new one this year because his wore out so i've got most of this one done so this is the sole part you make four of these this this rounded oval shape make four of these two for one foot two for the other because it's double double sided on this you'll end up sewing this up but this is felted this is not going to be seen so this is just a whip stitch super simple no no fancy sewing and um so i try to time myself because i get asked a lot about how long it takes to knit one of these i get asked a lot how long is it going to take to knit that it's so hard to answer that question so i did time myself so this is the very large size this is the women's size one that I held up last time. So you can see the difference in the sizes. <clears throat> so this is the large. So this is gonna take longer than this. And these will take longer than a child size would. So, but for this very giant one, <laughs> which if you're knitting for man, or probably one of this as a medium one, um, the sole itself, this brown part, which is knit first, it took me about half hour, maybe 45 minutes. So we'll call it 45 minutes to an hour let's just call it an hour for one so that'd be two hours for two and that'd be four hours for the four of them so that's like two movies two evenings and a movie right that you could do this and then the upper the upper clog is probably about the same time maybe 45 minutes half hour 45 minutes and um and then you have the little cuff part here so this is like a good hour hour 15 so four five six Let's say eight hours. I'll pat it and say six to eight hours to knit a pair. That's for the pair. So that's easily done if you only knit in the evenings in a week, right? Got plenty of weeks between now and Christmas to do a family's worth of clogs. And with all the, they're talking about all the supply chain and Christmas being hard. This is a great idea. Matter of fact, I just thought, I'm like, wow, I've never knitted my sisters or their husbands or partners. I haven't ever knitted them clogs. I think I'm going to knit them clogs this year because I can get that. I can finish that and send it off on their way and they'll love it. So that's what I decided I'm going to do um, for my for my my sisters and their family um, this, this time, this year, because I couldn't quite figure out what I was going to do. I'm knitting clogs. <laughs> so now, um, tricks on reading patterns. Uh, these, this particular pattern has three rows in it on the sole part that are very long. There's much of stuff going on and you're doing some turning and it's really easy to get mixed up. It's really easy to do a section too many times or skip a section and then you end up all wrong. So how do you make it simpler and any pattern that has long rows, such as this pattern right here, that's all one row. So when you have that much happening in one row, 
um, sometimes it helps to rewrite it differently. And so what I've found that really works, and especially if you only have a couple rows in a pattern, you don't need to do, but you know, those two rows, cause the rest is okay. I do it vertically instead of writing it all out horizontally. And often you got multiple sizes in them. So you got sizes you're having to decipher plus all this horizontal stuff. And it's just repeat this two times, repeat this four times. Oh my God. So horizontal <laughs> and you just sort of break it up into little sections that make sense to you. And, and then you just read it down this way. So this is row one, this is row three, I guess, and row five. So, and then you use a post-it. You just put your post-it here and you get a post-it or your highlighter tape and you keep your, so that your eyes don't jump to some place they're not supposed to be. And I find that this works really, really well. And then, um, and then I went ahead and also simplified the way this is written again, because there's a lot of counting. It's like knit 33, knit 17, turn knit 47. And it's a lot of counting. And it's easy to get the counting off. <laughs> and people don't like to count. So I figured out a way to make that go away. So, um, but you have to come to the class to know what that is. <laughs> so that's one way to simplify a pattern. Now, another way that no, another pattern issue that comes is if you have, and lace is really, um, has this a lot, is guilty about this, have a lot of rows and repeated rows. So like you have a 25 row repeat where you have 25 rows and you have to go back to again, 25 rows, and you have to repeat that multiple times for a pattern. That's a lot. And sometimes those rows are also really long and it's just a lot. And so there's a many opportunities for mistakes in that. <laughs> so one of the ways that is a game changer, and especially with your, when you're on lace and possibly cables, anything that's got a lot of repeating is to break the rows into index cards. So each row has its own card. And when I did this with clients, it uh, just made all the difference in the world. Reading the pattern, it wasn't frustrating for them. There was a lot fewer mistakes so you just write the pattern you can also type it and print it and then you know cut the pieces out and glue them onto the thing but I wrote them like this one as you can see is a longer one <clears throat> but still it's read horizontally more than it is I mean vertically more than it is horizontally so this is row five and then when I get done with row five I just put it to the back I also on this I put um, packing tape on top um, just to preserve the cards because this was a big pat this was a big project and I was going to do these over and over and over and over and over again so I didn't want the cards getting messed up <laughs> no coffee stains that kind of thing so anyway if you do a pattern you put it to the back you finish this pat this this row you put it to the back you finish this row you put it to the back and you just go until you know and then when you're done like let's say you're finished I just put it to the back I know that I'm on this row I clip them together rubber band them together and I know exactly where I'm at and so this is a really good trick you can use bigger the bigger index cards if you need more vertical space um, to write your rows out but this is a game changer for a lot of rows repeated rows game changer best thing in the world <laughs> so I think that's it today that'll finish my little video and um just remember that we got clogged saturday at two a few seats left so call and save your seat and i will see you in the studio bye